Well, looks like the sun is getting active again. We had an appearance of the aurora last night. It looks like it could appear tonight as well. As a matter of fact, uh, Geomagnetic Storm Watch has been issued by our partners down in uh, Boulder for this. And a corneal mass injection, just an injection of plasma that comes off of the uh, sun. It interacts with the upper levels of the atmosphere, with the electrical fields up there, as well as with the particles up, the air particles up there, produces the color of the aurora. So it's anticipated to arrive this afternoon, but it will still be going as we get dark this evening. And it's what we call the KP index. Basically, how far south can you see the aurora? It looks like it's going to peak, at least if I think at this point, we have about 9 p.m. at midnight that we could see on either side of this. Now, the advantage to going back to standard time now is it should be just about completely dark as we head towards 6 o'clock, so we could see it as early as that. And it wanes after midnight as it moves out of the area. And this is about how south it can be observed. Uh, G6 is right about here. This is G5 here, or, or a KP of uh, 5. It's a KP of 7 right here. Good chance of seeing it there, basically anywhere from about Boston over toward Chicago, northern part of Wyoming, and over toward the Seattle area as well. Now, we're looking for a KP of 6. Very good chance of seeing that across Canada, obviously. Now, the view line right here goes through Wyoming, basically where it can be seen on the northern horizon. Now, this could shift a little bit further north and south. This isn't exact. So I think we have a decent chance of seeing this, sky cover permitting, of course. Now, some viewing tips for this. Get away from city lights. You want it as dark as possible. This is Wyoming. This shouldn't be a problem. Look to the north-northeast. That's where we'll be originating from. A lot of time for your eyes to adjust. It may just appear as a faint glow on the horizon. You really want to get a good look at it. Look at it through a camera if you have one of those, or even a cell phone. Put it in night mode. And if you want to take a picture of it, turn the exposure of at least 5 to 10 seconds works well. You may want to turn it up to 20 or something like that. If you want to re really make those colors pop. And if you want to take a picture of it, try to use a tripod to get the camera steady. You want to prevent those blurry images, obviously. It's hard to hold it steady for that long. Now, cloud cover is going to be the big concern with this. Now, unfortunately, those of you across the western mountains, there will be some rain showers out in this area, so not much of a chance of seeing that. A little bit better chance as we head east of the divide. There will be some breaks in here, but it's not going to be a clear night by any means. We can't time exactly where those, every cloud is going to pop up, so you've got to be patient with this. Let's head toward the peak time. Clouds are a little thicker, but there still should be some breaks across the area. Further north will probably be the best chance of seeing those breaks in the clouds, but I think just about everybody east of the divide should see some breaks at some time between 6 p.m. and midnight. So if you want to try to go out, get a look at one of nature's greatest things, those dancing colors in the sky.